All right, so one of the things I was taught when I was learning how to build gates is, is to think about whether or not your bracing needs to be in tension or compression. So this brace right here is under compression, meaning that it's being compressed as the gate tries to sag, this bra brace is being compressed. This would be the opposite of that. This is a tension or a tension brace, and that means that as it sags, it's putting it under tension, trying to pull it apart. So because this gate is hinged over here on this post, anything that is solid needs to be under compression. And there's one other key thing that we need to think about, and that is we've got to keep this angle under 45 degrees. So if we were out here, we would have, we would need to think about a different way to brace this gate. But since we're under 45 degrees, this brace is a good brace. Now think about it this way. So if I hold my arm straight up in the air, I can take a lot of load this way. But as I put my arm, pull my arm out this way, I can carry less and less load until I get out here and then I become very weak. So once we go past that 45 degree angle, this brace becomes extremely weak and wants to basically pull itself apart. And that's why we never want to exceed 45 degrees on our compression bracing. Same thing on any tension bracing. So if we were going to do that and we had a really wide gate for some reason, um, then maybe we would we'd want to do another vertical here in the middle and do uh, two compression braces like this. Um, so you'd go, like if I was going to have a middle vertical here, we would do a compression brace from here to here and then another one from here to here. Always making sure that we keep that compression angle under 45 degrees. What I see a lot of people try and do is they'll try and do a brace from here to here and then another one from here to here. That's a pretty common style. Or they'll try and do one from here to here and then another one from here to here. And when you do one from here to here, if we were going to do that, that angle would exceed our 45 degrees because we'd be coming down like this and that's a very weak brace. So think about those things when you're doing your bracing on, even if it's a cantilever gate, uh, for example. We use the same principles on a cantilever gate. We're also making sure that the up end is away from the hinges because if we had the bracing going this way, as that gate tries to sag, it's just going to try and pull the screws. The only thing that we have going for us is the, the strength of the screws and the screws in the wood. So from the hinge side up to the top on the latch side. Now we have these just for some additional support, just to give us uh, additional support. But even without that, this gate is typically plenty strong. All these products can be purchased at swifence.com under the cedar section, the cedar gate hardware. And this is my absolute favorite latch uh, because it's lockable and it's operational from both sides of the gate. The other really nice thing about these latches is because it's got a pretty strong bar and we've got this down here is that it actually gives some support to the gate versus a little dinky latch with some small screws. We've got a little bit more gate support just in the latch itself. So another thing to help prevent it from sagging.